One technique that you'll often see used in nightscape photography is to take a single very long exposure of the foreground, either before or after you finish your sky exposures to make sure that you can bring out all of the detail in the foreground under very low light conditions, while at the same time reducing a lot of noise in the image. The challenge that you're often presented with when using this method is isolating a very complicated foreground, often that's the trees along a skyline, from the background so that you can merge the two images together. And that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video, is using Photoshop's Select and Mask tool to easily isolate the foreground. If you take a look at the images that I have here, we've got the completed sky image with the reflection in the lake and the sky all stacked together that we did in a previous video that I'll link up in the corner, as well as the roughly five and a half minute exposure that we took for the foreground to bring out some of that detail. Now, as you might imagine, going in and masking out and selecting every one of these little branches along the trees could be a quite tedious task. But thankfully, Photoshop has some built-in tools that make this a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do first is just right-click on either the thumbnail or the image itself and choose Edit in Photoshop. Now, being that I've already made some adjustments to this image in Lightroom, it's gonna present me with this dialog to choose whether I want to edit the original file, a copy of this, or a copy with the Lightroom adjustments. I prefer to edit one with the Lightroom adjustments, so I'm working on something that's visually similar to what I created. So I'm gonna choose that and go ahead and hit edit. This will open the image in Photoshop so that we can start to apply our selecting masking tools. What I usually like to do first is duplicate my background layer, either Command or Control J, or I can right click and say duplicate layer. This just gives me an opportunity to edit this just a little bit to help make my masking easier without affecting the image below. And with that, what I typically will do is try to make sure I've got as much contrast as I can between the darker foreground and the brighter sky. In this case, I'm just going to go up to my image adjustment and choose curves so that I can brighten things up a little bit in the highlights by pulling this point up and just slightly darker on the quarter tones here by pulling that part of the curve down. And you'll see that starts to create a little bit more contrast in between the trees and the sky, which is gonna help the software identify the mask a little bit easier. Then to start creating the mask, I'm gonna go into the select tool, select menu, and then select and mask. This will open up a new tool that we can use to start to isolate the foreground from the background. You'll see here, I've got my view mode set to overlay. Yours might be different when you first open this, but I, I suggest switching that to overlay just so you can more easily see what you're working with. And then set a color for that mask that's pleasing for you to work with and has enough contrast to the background that you can really see what you're doing. I'm going to start with this quick selection tool on the top left just to get a rough selection of the foreground itself. I'm gonna start with that and just increase the size of that brush a little bit so it's uh, easier to work through and select a big thing. And all I'm going to do is just hold down on my mouse. I'm gonna click and drag and just paint through most of this foreground area. And you see there, it just, as soon as the software figures out what that is and what, what I want to work with, it's just gonna snap into place and select a big swath of it. And I can kind of do the same and start painting in these smaller areas, uh, both in the reflection and in the sky. And what I want to avoid is sometimes when you're doing this, if, if the sky is too similar, it'll suddenly just pop up a big section like this. And we want to don't want to do that. That's just going to be too much to edit later. So I'm going to hit Command or Control Z to undo that selection there and just continue to work through this area. Now, once I have things reasonably close to selected, or at least very roughly selected, the next thing I'm gonna do is switch over to this Refine Mask tool, or Refine, Refine Edge Brush tool. This is where the real magic happens in the software. So if I zoom in on this, and all I'm gonna do is, similar to before, I'm gonna to start to paint over these areas and essentially teach Photoshop what I wanna mask out and what I wanna keep. So with a relatively small brush, I'm just gonna start painting in over some of these areas and you don't have to be terribly precise. That's the beauty of this. And you'll see as I work through and I continue to go over and I continue to work this, it's gonna to start to learn more and more where, where I in fact wanted that edge to be.
Now you may have noticed I had previously switched my brush to a much larger piece than you might expect that I'd want to use on something like this when I'm trying to increase these details. But this is just helping me paint in these brighter, whiter areas that were missed more globally. And as I get further down to the details, that's when I'm going to start to switch the brush down to a smaller size and work on those details. So I'm going to go through and rough, roughly paint in some of this stuff. We'll come back and then we'll take a look at the details. So there we go. Even with just that first quick pass through this with a larger brush, you can already see it did a pretty, pretty good job of isolating all of the finer details of this uh, foreground from the background. However, if you zoom in on this and kind of look through one section at a time, you'll start to see I've got a lot of the whiter, brighter sky poking through between these pine trees here. Uh, I've got small little branches like this that have been masked out instead of kept. Um, all, sort of all throughout the image, uh, both in the top area here and down below in the reflection, if I scroll down to that. It's a little bit more noticeable down here, being that there's not as much contrast, there's a little bit more noise, it has a harder time picking that up. But I'm not really as worried about that section as I am the sky, since I can use different blending techniques to, to, to hide that a little bit. I don't have to be quite as precise in the reflection, but we'll cover that in another video. In this case, I just want to continue going through and really refine some of these other sections. And it's it's really the same technique of painting that in over the light and dark areas. But to help the software figure that out a little bit better, I'm just going to reduce the size of my brush. Uh, you can do that with the, the bracket keys like I just did here or manually up in this section at the top for the size adjustment. So with that smaller brush in place, I'm just going to zoom in on these sections and start to paint over those as well. And you'll see as soon as I release the mouse here, it's going to recalculate things and start to remove those from the, from the uh, selection. So I'm just going to go through exact same process, paint through these lighter areas. Uh, the same thing with these areas where it may have picked up and masked out some of the tree tips, the branches, so on and so forth, like you see in this section. If I paint that over, release the mouse, let it catch up on the processing, and there you go. So I'm going to run through this, I'll come back, and we'll look at finishing this up. Okay, so that's it. I've gone through, I've refined the mask with varying size brushes, depending on the level of detail that I'm working with on an area of the image. If I zoom in on this, you can see it's done quite a good job of picking up every last little bit of the details in these trees, both in the sky, uh, throughout the little holes in the leaves, all throughout these trees, as well as down in the reflection area. Um, as I said, I can be a little bit more forgiving down in this area, but even so, it's done a phenomenal job of picking this up. So the last thing I really want to do with this, and this is kind of a matter of personal preferences, uh, we've got these additional tools over here for global refinements where I can smooth out the edges a little bit. I can feather them in some cases. I do like to put just a smallest little bit of feathering on there, um, increase the contrast and to refine these a little bit. Now, with all of these, what I really recommend is kind of taking it all the way over, seeing what the effect is on your mask, bringing it back, seeing how that changes to understand the tool a little bit better, and then just finding the right spot that you think works for you. The other one here is this edge shift. And what that's going to do is, well, really as the name implies, shift the edge of that mask either outward or inward. And as a general fail safe, I kind of like to have this overlap my foreground just a little bit so I can avoid, here, I'll, I'll pull this out a little bit further. I can avoid this white glow that you tend to get around the edges if it's not perfectly tight to it. So by shrinking that, you know, maybe negative 10% or so, by shrinking that a little bit, it's going to just tighten that up just a little bit further and make sure that we don't have as many of those issues showing through. And when you're happy with the result of the mask, just go ahead and hit OK here. It's going to calculate that and put everything in as a layer mask hiding everything that you've just masked out in the sky. Now, 
You'll see that the mask is on the top layer, the one that I had to increase the contrast with the curves adjustments before, and I don't wanna keep that layer. So what I need to do is just drag that mask down onto the background layer before it. But before I can do that, I just need to unlock the background layer by clicking the lock icon, then click and drag the mask from above down onto the base layer. Then I can go ahead and select my duplicate, delete it, and I'm left with my final result. I'm going to go ahead and hit save on this. And again, being that we brought this in from Lightroom, it's gonna pop that right back into Lightroom as a new copy. And close this file. And there you have it. There's your foreground beautifully isolated from the background that we can then take and pull into our stacked sky images and blend the two together for a really nice final composition. We'll save that for another video, but as always, if you've got any additional questions, please leave those in the comments below. I will address everything. If you, and if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.